Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I want to continue talking about The Love Crew. Now to be fair, The Love Crew is actually a book club and it is a book club that will begin to be formed in reality um, here around where I live with people who are interested in reading books and talking about love. And of course, that's why I started talking about on YouTube as well, because I'd love it if we could have an online community for it as well. I mean, that's what we all do, isn't it? We read books and we talk about love. <laughs> OK, so I left a little gap between my last video and this one again, because I wanted to give people an opportunity to contact me, to talk to me um, about the question I asked, because I asked the same question that I did in the first video, which was, what do you need to feel loved? And it's been very interesting. Um, only two people have left comments under the video but lots of people have contacted me privately which is lovely and I'm so grateful thank you all very much um, of course I want to make the conversation more public but I do understand that some of the topics were private I get it no problem at all so thank you thank you thank you so the lovely Pauline that I'd mentioned before had left a message underneath the last video as well and she said she'd been thinking about it a lot and she feels self-worth is a really important element of love and I couldn't agree with her more because <clears throat> unless we understand self-worth we cannot attract the right people into our world can we and that often leads to massive problems later on and I'm talking now about obviously romantic relationships. I'm not sure she only meant rela romantic relationships. I'm sure she meant self-worth as in loving herself first, which is absolutely spot on. And then um, another lovely person that I love very much has also responded in, t in the comments. Her name is Bronwyn and she left a lovely message there as well, recommending a book called the Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Now, I haven't read it, but it sounds awesome and just up the right street for romance writers, doesn't it? <laughs> but today I want to raise <clears throat> a very important issue. Now, as I said, I've had lots of conversations with people over the years and more recently as well as, as a result of asking these questions and starting the love crew. And the thing that comes up most, most, is the fact that people feel they weren't loved or they didn't receive the love they needed as children. And that is very interesting to me because it obviously informs everything that we experience in our lives um, as we grow older and also including our love relationships with partners and friends. And so... I understand. I mean, as children, it's difficult. We can't really ask for what we want. I mean, babies do, don't they? They scream until you feed them or change their nappy or put them to sleep or something. But I'm talking about as you grow older a little bit. Now, I have spoken about this issue that I'm now going to raise in a previous video long, long ago when I first published my book, Breathing for Confidence, because here's what happens. As children, very young children, um, we are like sponges, you know, we just absorb everything. And of course, we have to learn how to behave in society, don't we? And so the people around us are parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, you know, and eventually teachers as well, tell us um, how to behave in public. So, for example, you know, if you do something that's not acceptable, people would say, don't do that. Don't say that. And what happens is we start breathing higher and higher in our bodies and we disconnect from who we really are. And as a singer, I can tell you that causes massive pro problems because we have to change the breathing before somebody can sing. But the point is it has a, a really big detrimental effect on most of us. Most people, and watch them and you'll see it, most people breathe high in their bodies. 
because it's easier to not connect with your deepest emotions that way. Because once we breathe deeply, we connect with our emotions and with everything that we are. And that causes interesting <laughs> revelations, let's put it that way. But of course, the people around us who say, don't say that, don't sit like that, don't speak like that, don't look at that person, you know, whatever it is. Um, they're not saying it to damage you. They're saying it because we all need to fit into society. And so that's what they're trying to teach us. But it has a detrimental effect. It really does. So as I said, look and you'll see people breathing really high in their bodies and they are completely disconnected from their emotions most of the time or they don't want to feel too deeply or they don't want to look at issues too deeply. Do you know what I mean? And that prevents you from being able to be free and open to love, not just romantic partners, of course, but also friends. And so that is why I raised that question. What do you need to feel loved? Because most of us can't even ask it of ourselves. So it was wonderful that Pauline said she feels, as she said before, respect, yes, and self-worth. Those are the things that she feels is important to her to feel self-love. And I agree because obviously you have to respect yourself, right? And you have to know your self-worth so that you attract the right people into your life. As I said, not just romantic partners, but also friends. You know, the right friends um, is very important, isn't it? And even with friends, we can't always ask for what we want <laughs> in, in love from them um, because we don't know. We don't know. We don't look deep enough because we're breathing too high. We don't looking, we're not looking into the emotional um, needs that we have. Um, so I want to tell you something um, that kind of comes from the singing world again, because that is what I used to do. For those of you who don't know, I used to um, be an operatic soprano for many, for most of my life. But now I'm writing. So. Um, I find often, and I'm sure you do too, that the reason we don't connect with people, especially with love, because here's the thing, we all want to be loved. We all want love. That's the thing, isn't it? But it seems so multi-layered and so difficult for some people. And now the thing is, it takes communication, honest communication to say what it is you want, what you need, and how you want to be treated in a relationship, whether it's a friend relationship or a sibling relationship or a parent relationship as you grow older, or a romantic relationship. But that communication is extremely difficult because, as I said, most of us don't know what we need for ourselves. We can't even tell ourselves what we need from us to feel loved, right? So we look outside of ourselves. And that's where the communication problem comes in. Because, for example, you think about it. When you meet a romantic partner or even just a friend, you come from completely different households, sometimes completely different races, with different belief systems, different ways of being, different things that you do. And yes, that's exciting. That attracts us probably to the person because they're so different from us. But that's when it also causes problems because we assume that people have the same values as us if we don't discuss it. We assume people feel the same as us if we don't discuss it. And how many people do? You meet somebody who's cute in a bar or somewhere and you go, yeah, yeah, he'll do. He's fabulous. And you hang out and, you know, you get together and whatever. I mean, this happened when I was very young, I have to say, <laughs> not now, but I'm sure you can all relate to this on some level. And you never think about the fact that it is a different person from a different household for, with different values, different ways of thinking, different ways of being. And so that's where the problem comes in then, you know, and because we don't know how to communicate necessarily with that person to say, well, no, these are my values. This is what I value in my life. This is who I am. This is how I love myself. And this is what I need from you. We don't do that. We very seldom do that. Not until long down the line, possibly, when the relationship may have deteriorated and 
both part partners are at a loss and angry and sad that, that it didn't work out. And like I said, it could be a relationship with um, a romantic partner or a friendship equally. Um, it, it has the same elements. So this is what I'm going to say. In order to make communication easier, this is something I learned at university. I had a professor who used to say to me, uh, because I have a degree in how to teach singing and drama as well. And um, so she used to say, if you want to teach somebody something, you can talk until you blue in your face. If they can't hear you, they can't hear you. So how do you find out how to teach somebody something, especially like voice that's so, you know, you can't touch it, you can't see it, you, well, you can hear it, but yes, it's a very difficult thing to teach. And of course, it's, it's an organic instrument that lives in our bodies and changes with everything. So whether you've had enough water, enough sleep, yeah, I haven't slept very much. I'm so sorry, my voice sounds weird. <laughs> There's some very odd energies around at the moment, probably the eclipse season, I don't know. But um, do you see what I mean? So everything affects your voice, what you've eaten, the fight you've had last night with somebody, everything affects your voice. Now, in order to find out how you can communicate with someone that they can hear you, you need to find out whether they are auditory? Can they hear you? In other words, are they people who are tuned into sound? So you'll hear it quite quickly because it's usually people who love music and they'll say things um, such as, I hear you when you speak some, you say something to them and they agree with you. They'll say, I hear you. It's usually a confirmation that they overall more auditory. Then you get people who are visual and so they'll say things like oh yeah I see what you mean yeah um, a lot of us are visual and and many of us are, are all of them together so you have to really think about what this person is saying to you and listen to their words because they'll tell you what they how they learn how they experience the world that might be different from you so yeah so visual auditory and then you get kinesthetic and this is how people feel so they'll say things like, yes, I, I feel the same as you, or I feel this way, or, or like that. So then you'll know they are more feeling people. So then you have to create word pictures when you speak to them in a way that they can accept what you're saying. Now, a lot of people have said to me, and I'm very grateful for this, that I'm a very good teacher. But I think it's because I know this particular thing. Because if you speak to someone in the way that they can hear you, they can learn from you. And equally, if you can speak to someone in the way that they can hear you, you can communicate with them in a way that maybe no one else can. And then you can iron out all sorts of things, including <laughs> what you need to feel loved, as long as you know what that is, right? So I'd love to know what you think of this. Do you ever use these kinds of techniques in your own life with, um, like I said, not only romantic partners, but also with friends? Because in all my books, I write, well, even in Breathing for Confidence, by the way, I write about relationships and people and um, love. Yes. Oh, yes. So um, I'd love to know what you think. Do you use these techniques or do you have something better that you do? Um, it would be awesome if we could all share that and we can start a communication about how we communicate with other people about love. And again, still, what is important to us? What helps us to feel loved? Not just externally from other people, but from ourselves, you know. So I'll give you an example. For example, if I'm feeling sad and a bit low, whatever, I have a bath and I put a bath bomb in it and I put candles all around the bath <laughs> and I sit there with my mug of hot chocolate and in no time I feel fabulous and I play some lovely music. And then, yeah, in no time I feel, ah, the world is fine now, you know. Um, so maybe you do something like that as well. Sometimes I go for a walk 
because I live near a fantastic park. It's beautiful. And those of you who followed me on other social media platforms will see all the pictures that I sometimes take. Um, and so it's lovely, isn't it, to go for a walk in nature and just, I love trees. So to be among beautiful trees, especially now it's, it's autumn here in London and the trees have turned, all the leaves have turned all fabulous colours, you know. So yes, so do let me know. I'd love to know what you think and I shall speak to you very soon. Mwah!